welcome to our very very short and brief video uh, we are going to talk about the certified public accountants of Uganda course my name is a CPA Innocent Mogisha from Harvest Training and Consultancy uh, one of the approved and recognized tuition provider for the certified public accountants of Uganda course the Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Uganda is mandated uh, to regulate accountants in Uganda, especially when it comes to the standard of accounting in Uganda. Uh, the Institute is also mandated to regulate the conduct of accountants and all those that are in practice, all those that have decided to uh, do external audit and um, have decided to uh, start the accounting practice as a business. In this video, I'll talk about the frequently asked questions. Uh, those questions that have been put forward by uh, some of you who want to enroll for the Certified Public Accountants of Uganda course. So I'll talk about a number of things, including what is CPA, the role of CPAs, uh, the syllabus structure, the entry requirements, issues of exemptions, progression rules. I'll talk about the pass mark. I'll talk about the modes of study. I'll talk about fees. Now the Certified Public Accountant Qualification is a designation given by the Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Uganda to all those individuals that complete the CPA professional course. The Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Uganda is mandated to regulate and maintain the, account the standards of accountants in Uganda. The Institute is also mandated to regulate the conduct of accountants and the practicing accountants those, as I again mentioned, those that have decided to practice accounting in Uganda as a business. So the Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Uganda is the mandated body, it's a government body, and it was established by the Accountants Act of 2013 to discharge the rules I have talked about. The role of a CPA, CPAs do very many things, including financial advisory, they act as financial advisors, uh, they act as tax consultants, they act as public accountants, they act as business consultants, they act as auditors, including internal and external auditors, and also um, work in any position where the entity may require a financial accounts officer. So basically, I would say that the opportunities as a CPA are definitely endless. If you don't have a CPA, you find yourself limited in a number of ways. You cannot take up particular, you, you may, yes, you may be employed, but you may not take up certain positions because of that limitation. So for you to do away with the limitation, you need to enroll for the Certified Public Accountants of Uganda course so that you can be able to uh, improve on your competitive advantage and be able to compete with others. Uh, the structure is made up of four levels. We have level one, which includes testing of competence. We have level two, which includes the testing of technical skills. We have level three, which includes testing of professional skills. And then we have level four, which uh, where we are tested on your professional uh, expertise. Level one is made up of six papers, including paper one, which is financial accounting. Paper 2, which is economics and entrepreneurship. Paper 3, which is quantitative techniques. Paper 4, which is management and information system. Uh, paper 5, which is business and company law. And then our paper 6, which is cost and management accounting. I should mention that this is the new syllabus, which is uh, effective 1st of January. 2023. Level 2, on the other hand, is made up of five papers with paper 7, which is financial reporting, paper 8, which is financial management, uh, paper 9, which is auditing, ethics, and assurance, paper 10, which is management decision and control, paper 11, which is taxation. Again, this is the new uh, syllabus effective. 1st of January 2023 and then when we look at uh, level 3 testing of professional uh, skills 
has six papers. Paper uh, 12, which is advanced financial reporting. Paper 13, which is public financial management. Paper 14, which is strategy, governance, and leadership. Paper 15, which is advanced financial management. Paper 16, which is audit, practice, and assurance. And then finally, paper 17, which is advanced taxation. So as you can see, in the new syllabus, advanced taxation is now our paper 17. And it is now on level 3. Then finally, level 4 is made up of one major paper, which is paper 18, integration of knowledge. And as I mentioned, here you're going to be tested for your professional competence. So you can get a copy of the detailed syllabus structure on our website, www.harvestuganda.net. You can download a copy from the website. Uh, now these uh, entry requirements are divided into three major these entry requirements are divided into three major categories we have those that have degrees okay from the university or institutes of higher learning we have certificates and uh, diplomas we can take you up if you have those qualifications and then the a level now of course um, the details include for those who have a degree definitely from any recognized university you will be uh, admitted into the program uh, if you have an accounting technician certificate or diploma from a recognized professional accountancy body such as uh, ISPAO now the Institute of Certified um, Accountants of Uganda has its own di diploma which is the accounting technicians diploma we have diplomas from institutes like CASNEB, uh, NBAA, and the uh, Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Rwanda, ICPARA, and so on. So those having the accounting technician certificate or diploma from professional accountancy bodies that are recognized, uh, you will also be uh, enrolled into the program. Then we have those that have diploma pursued in a period of at least two years from a recognized university or institution of higher learning. Okay, so those uh, categories are also allowed to enroll. Uh, then we have a professional certificate offered by any other body such as SIPS and CIM. Uh, you can also enroll for the CPA course. And then we have uh, those that have just uh, completed their A level and have the A-level certificate. Now here the condition is that you must have at least two principal passes. You must have at least two principal passes and then at least five credits at your O-level. Now in the five credits, English and mathematics are mandatory and are inclusive. Then we have the foreign accountancy qualification such as SCCA and SIMA and uh, CA. Now, people having these foreign accountancy qualifications, you might be required to seat additional papers. Uh, for example, right now, those that are having SCCA, you might be required to sit for paper 4, which is business law, and uh, paper 14, public sector accounting and reporting, including paper 9. Now, the reason for this is that SCCA is a global qualification, and you find that the business law, the framework for public sector accounting and reporting, the framework for taxation is not the same as the framework that we cover under the CPA. So uh, if you want to uh, be recognized by the Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Uganda and you have these foreign accountancy qualifications, you'll be required to, uh, to sit for additional papers so that you can be fully graduated as a CPA Uganda professional. Then when it comes to issues of exemptions, very many people have been asking us which papers are we going to do, uh, assuming that I've completed my university degree, uh, what exemptions am I entitled to, and so on. So I have something here from the brochure that you'll receive on registration with the institute. And as you can see, uh, the exemptions are going to depend on the, first of all, the university, and then uh, secondly, the qualification 
uh, that you acquired from that particular university. So they're going to vary. And I'll be sharing this if you really, really want um, to know much more about which exemptions you're entitled to. As you can see, exemptions are going to be granted basically for level one papers. Le uh, level one papers, paper one up to paper seven, as we have seen in the structure. Those are the issues of exemptions. Uh, they will depend on the qualification and the university where you acquired your uh, first degree. Next, we move into the progression rules. And of course, there are several progression rules you need to uh, appreciate here. Number one, a candidate may sit for a minimum of one and a maximum of all the subjects at any level, at any one sitting. So you have to uh, sit for at least one paper. Okay. And if you are to sit for all of them, you can sit for all the papers at a particular uh, sitting. Now, I usually don't encourage people to sit for all the papers. I've only seen one person who has, who has done it in my eight years of experience in this profession. Only one person has managed to sit and pass all of them. It is very, very hard. First of all, it, the input is, is uh, too much. You need to labor a lot when it comes to reading and concentrating and focusing. And find that most of us are really uh, already employed and we have other responsibilities besides the CPA course. So it wouldn't be uh, reasonable for you to do all the papers. But you can do the papers if you have all the time and the dedication and you don't have other commitments elsewhere. So you can sit for uh, a minimum of one paper and a maximum of all the papers at all the levels. And of course, the other question has been um, to advise how many papers one can do. I think three papers would be, would be good. Three papers are good if you are working, if you have other responsibilities, if you have a family and so on. Three papers are okay as long as you, 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 you set your target, you set your timetable and schedule very, very well and you have a very, very good institution that is uh, mentoring you and assisting you and you have all the materials, no problem. You can sit for three papers and be able to pass them. Number two is that um, a candidate must complete a lower level of the syllabus before proceeding on to the next T the next level. That's very, very important. You must complete level one before you go to level two. Now, the exception to this rule is that um, where a candidate has two subjects, either at level one or level two, in such a case, a candidate may sit for those subjects with some other subjects at the next level. But um, there are certain papers you cannot do um, at level one at the same time at level two. Things like financial accounting, and financial reporting. Those two papers go hand in hand. The knowledge in financial accounting is transferred and carried forward to financial reporting. So those two papers cannot be done at the same time. So if you have financial accounting at level one and financial reporting at level two, then those two cannot be taken at the same time. You must finish one before you proceed to the other. But of course we are saying you can take on two subjects either at level one or level two, assuming that you still have to complete level one and you intend to proceed to level two. Then the other rule is that a candidate must complete level three to be eligible to register for level four. So you must complete level three to be eligible to register for level four. So that is a very, very uh, big uh, limitation, something that is very, very important for you to note. Now, as I've so you're going to find additional uh, guidance in the handbook of course i'm going to leave a link uh, below this video if you're watching from our youtube channel or if you're watching from the cpa uh, page on our website you should be able to see uh, the download option for the student handbook so um, you'll be able to see further guidance especially when it comes to the progression rules uh, there are certain papers that you're not going to uh, do at the same time you cannot undertake those papers at the same time for instance financial accounting at level one cannot be taken 
uh, together with financial reporting. Um, again, uh, financial reporting can be done at the same time with uh, advanced financial reporting at level three. Then again, on level one, uh, quantitative techniques, which is now our paper three, cannot be taken together with management decision and control paper 10 at level 2. That's not going to be possible. Similarly, cost and management accounting at level 1 cannot be undertaken together with management decision and control paper 10 at level 2. Then uh, when it comes to level 2, you may not be able to do financial management paper 8 together with advanced financial management paper 15 at level 3. Uh, again, uh, auditing, ethics, and assurance, paper 9 at level 2, can be done together with audit practice and assurance, paper 16 at level 3. Um, then you find papers like taxation, uh, paper 11 at level 2, cannot be done at the same time with advanced taxation, paper 17 at level 3. Even if these are the only two papers you have, you cannot do this uh, concurrently or at the same time. Um, you find that the examination timetable has actually been designed in such a way that these papers are done at the same time. They are scheduled at the same time. You find that maybe taxation is happening at 2 p.m. Advanced taxation is happening at exactly the same time. So you should plan very, very well. And of course, as you progress, in the course, you'll be able to know which papers you can do at the same time. Um, again, there are those people that have foreign accountancy qualifications, uh, the FAQs. Uh, these may be exempted, yes, but there are certain papers they are supposed to do. So you'll be able to find all those details in the student handbook in addition to this presentation. So that should be able to guide you fully. Now the issues of the pass mark, again we have been having questions about what is the pass mark, how much should I score in each paper for uh, the institute to give me a pass. So the pass mark has been set at 50%, percent with 50% percent, shall say you have passed the paper. Of course I should mention that the institute will be able to indicate the marks on your result slip so that people can know uh, how you have performed in a particular area. So this again calls for more hard work as you are preparing for these exams because if you have 50s, 50s and 50s it would mean you didn't really uh, do it well. I usually tell my students 50% means you've passed half and failed half. So why would you do that? So score at least above 60%, 70%, 80%. Why not? So prepare adequately because this is who you are. Usually I tell people that um, as you're undertaking this course, you have taken this particular path. This is going to be your life. This is going to be your career. This is going to be the person you are. You cannot be a plumber. You cannot be a pilot. You cannot be a... Yeah, you can be a politician, but you want to be a DJ. Okay? So you'll be a professional accountant. And as a professional accountant, we expect that you clearly understand what you're doing. So it is important for you to actually score above the 50%. Now the fees, I'm going to structure my presentation into uh, four. One are the registration fees. Now the registration fees uh, include the registration fees with the Institute of Certified Public Accountants, ICPAU. Um, this is a one-off payment that you're going to make of 150,000 Ugandan shillings. Uh, on top of that, you, you'll have to pay National Council for Higher Education. Uh, some of you have already done uh, higher education, you know, this 20,000, you are accustomed to it. So right now, you need a total of 170,000 uh, total in registration fees. On top of that, uh, you, of course, be required to make payments for tuition fees 
uh, this is for the tutor support uh, including lectures lecture notes lecture slides now at harvest training and consultancy we charge per paper okay we charge by paper and the fees vary depending on the level now the fees i'm sharing right here are not cast in stone they can be revised but at the time of making this uh, presentation these are the fees level 1 215000 per paper uh, level 2 is 245000 per paper level 3 is 265 level 4 is 315 now the fees include tutor support the lectures uh, in form of um, uh, physical lectures in form of uh, online lectures of course for us we have blended teaching we can uh, some papers are done online other papers are done uh, physical one-on-one uh, -on -one. these include uh, the lecture notes uh, the lecture slides and all the materials you need to cover the course however the fees do not include the practice and revision kit you'll, you'll be able to purchase the practice and revision kit separately at only 25,000 Ugandan shillings then uh, again we have the examination fees However, these will depend on when you are making the registration. I'm going to be sharing the examination uh, dates so that you know when you're supposed to pay your examination fees. For level one, normal registration, you pay 105,000 per paper. If you do it late, it's going to come to 157,500 shillings. Level two, 115,000 per paper, normal registration which will come to 172,500 late registration level 3 is 120,000 for normal registration which comes to 180,000 if you do it late level 4 325,000 normal registration uh, which comes to 487,500 late registration then of course uh, if you are exempted, if you are exempted, then the exemption fees are going to be applicable as per the uh, fees or the quotation on your screens. Level 1 per paper is 105, depending on the number of papers that you are exempted. Of course, exemptions depend on the qualification you have right now as you're enrolling for this course. So uh, those of you who have done maybe accounting, some of you have done some qualifications related to accounting, you may qualify for some exemptions. So you can use these uh, fees to see how much you're supposed to pay for the exemptions. Again, when it comes to exemptions, you may not need to do it right now. Right now, you're going to focus on the registration fees and the tuition fees. Then the training and consultancy we have three major modes of study uh, one is the evening program uh, this comprises of the scheduled three hour lecture sessions starting from 5 30 p.m monday to friday then we also have the weekend program which comprises of again scheduled three hour lecture sessions from 8 a.m to 5 p.m on a saturday and Sunday, uh, Sundays may not be a full day, but at least uh, it covers the weekend. Then we have good news for those who have a busy schedule. We now have what we call the self-paced plan or program. Now the self-paced program is perfect for you who is very busy. You have a very busy schedule, yet you have the obligation of uh, progressing with your professional career so you may not be able to attend physical and live interactive online classes so if you are that kind of person then you can enroll uh, for our self-paced courses with um, pre-recorded lecture videos uh, you get access to unlimited resources such as lecture notes lecture slides tests quizzes mock examinations however what i need to mention here is that you will attend the self-paced program following your own study schedule however under our monitoring we shall be monitoring uh, your attendance we shall be monitoring on how you're progressing and where we see that you are dragging you're delaying 
we shall be able to give you a call, check on you, and see which challenges you are facing. So you're all covered, okay? You're all covered. Just talk to us after this presentation. Then we can let you know how best you can start the program right away. Also with the online classes, you uh, we conduct this using Zoom. And of course, you'll be enrolled to our e-learning platform. You have an account. And then uh, whether it is physical or online classes, we shall uh, enroll you and join you to our WhatsApp group for support and discussions. And then you receive unlimited tutor support 24 hours. 20 On your screens, we have a table that is summarizing the examination diets. These are for the year 2023. So in 2023, we are going to have three major examination diets. We have the May examination diet, the August examination diet, and the November examination diet. If you can, take a screenshot of this because this is very, very important. However, still you can access this on our website on the CPA uh page on our website you can still uh, get to see the registration deadlines the examination dates and the centers now for the may uh exemption diet the normal registration will be running from 1st of january ending 31st of march if you don't make it through the normal registration you can do the late registration which will run from 1st of april up to 15th of april now for the may examination diet examinations are going to be done from the 29th of may to 2nd of june and of course we shall conduct this at all the centers then we shall have another i'll we'll have another examination diet in august and of course for you to register here i'm talking about registration for examinations okay registration for examinations uh, we expect the normal registration. Uh, we expect you to conduct or to register uh, from 1st of May to 31st of July. Now, for late registration, it's not going to be applicable. Okay? So, take note, those who want to do uh, the August examination diet, they won't, uh, the late, there won't be any late registration. Examinations for the August diet are going to be conducted from the 21st of August to 25th of August only at the Kampala Center. So as you are programming for this year, put that in mind. Finally, we have uh, the last examination diet in this year, 2023, which is the November examination diet. Here, we shall expect you to register between 1st of August to 30th of September. And then a late registration will only be for 15 days from the 1st to the 15th of October. Examinations for the November examination diet are going to be conducted between the 27th of November to uh, December to 1st of December 2023. And uh, for the November examination diet, exams will be conducted at all the centers, all the examination centers that have been uh, uh, established by the Institute. All right, so I think we've come to the end of the presentation. You can always reach out to us. We are located uh, on Kalmax Building, Office Suite D12, Plot 48 Bomo Road. And of course, you can uh, reach out on those mobile phones, on those numbers on your screens right now. You can send us a WhatsApp, you can send us an email, you can visit our website, you can visit our offices. This is what we do, and we have dedicated staff that are there to advise you and guide you on exactly what to do. You can also. Reach